I'm Alistair Shelterworth and I'm here to interview the Pat White family for UBTV at the O2 Academy of Bristol. I think that you've been caricaturised a lot by the music press. Do you ever feel as though that sort of overshadows the music? I don't know. I don't know. It's difficult to know exactly how you're perceived by like large groups of people you don't even know. Mm. You kind of, you kind of like <laughs> blind to that in, in lots of ways. I think. So I, I don't really, I don't yeah. really know what to say about. I that. think it's true. I think, I think, I think we have been caricaturised a bit, but maybe we deserve it. It's been alluded to um, in some of the interviews that I've looked at, but I feel like it's all been danced around a bit. Yeah. I'm perplexed by someone how how someone goes from. Playing in a band like the Metros, to playing in a band like the Fat White Family, and like how 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 did that happen? How did it happen? Yeah, like you know, I mean, because I mean, it's just a completely different. Band, <coughs> yeah, like, you know, I, don't, I think I just grew up. I was just a kid, and no, I just took some serious time down the job club, didn't it? <laughs> 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 <It's> true. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I was I was just it was just I wasn't really into music at all. I'd only listen to Ian Jury. So I kind of once I started discovered kind of this, really getting into music, I just wanted to kind of make music that I like. I guess it's quite so, simple, really. <laughs> so. You're a very outspoken group, and uh, I suppose in the same way as uh, some country teasers, do you find having yeah, like are... some political or social angle? Like, yeah, I like the way with with them everything's fair game. I think it's I think it's important that it's like that. You know, that you've got that kind of. You're kind of, you know, if you if, if you're an artist or a musician, you're allowed to say whatever you want. I think that's an important, you know, thing. I think I think they they were a really great example of that. You know, so yeah, they're like kind of, yeah, we they were like a, a mold for us to kind of absolutely fit ourselves into. <laughs> Also ask if Bobby Davra ever shot. Yeah. And uh, you know that gem from your Christmas single, The Drones. Um, Georgie Osborne in his cradle, Maggie Fingers in his crippled ass. How important do you see having a set, uh, sense of humour to you? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's crucial. Yeah. Yeah, you've got it's just the way we are. Yeah. It seems like there's a huge amount of development that these songs went through. Yeah. And what sort of drove them to the sort of chaotic? sound that you get on Champagne Olivers? Um, I don't know, even when we were recording the album, we recorded kind of like yeah. four versions of every song, you know, we, we, we just kept trying them out in different ways. Um, I don't know, it was just, we, it, we just settled on the ones that we just felt most comfortable with, and I can't really explain why we felt like that, but they just, you know, sometimes, some of them are not live, they're a lot heavier than they are on the album, you know, people are always yeah. saying, oh, it doesn't sound like <coughs> same as it does on the record but we, we recorded them in the same way we do them live but they just they, they lost something in that process so it was like yeah that, the, the sense of humor wasn't didn't get across as, as, as well if it was just done in this kind of like all energy kind of way you know so I don't, I don't know Leo something that you mentioned in a, a recent Pitchfork interview is that you're interested in artists who write about reprehensible things and the way that positions people that like those songs yeah so when you play live and you've got a thousand people screaming give the kids enough rope and let them hang themselves like yeah. how do you feel Cav, having orchestrated that is it a weird feeling i'm quite satisfied with that <laughs> but, you know that was kind of the goal beyond the goal in to fact have kids, i thought it was to have children singing the, the lines like yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's nice to have a bunch of fifteen year olds going on yeah. about fifteen year old tongue, you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> it's you know it's strange and tickles the boundaries of <laughs> <laughs> You know? Yeah, I feel good about that. This time last year, that you were sort of offering meals, massages, and um, it was some indeed. covers in it exchange. Was. Nobody for took up the massage. Nobody took up the Nobody massage. Nobody went that far. Nobody took it up. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Yeah, they know some real weirdos, and nobody went for them as size. So I was kind of insulted. <laughs> <laughs> did you uh, record anybody, uh, so any song covers for anybody? Yeah, we did. What was the one? We did four covers. Oh, wow. oh, what did we do? Well, I did we some did, soul we did, tunes. Uh, we did a Rod Stewart cover. <laughs> someone, someone got us to cover this guy, King Charles, who's kind of. Really? Almost hated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a friend yeah, of ours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we did like a black metal version of the King yeah. Charles song. I did White Shade of Pale, I think I did. Oh, we did like an acapella white shade, shade of pale. Acapella <laughs> band doing ooh, and I like in the background. It was yeah, incredible. Yeah, that was difficult. <laughs> they were pretty yeah. slap slap dash yeah. recordings. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't put much effort into it. We didn't we're make multiple versions of them. We're, we're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You seem to have an incredibly close relationship with your fans. Um, uh, on your Facebook page, you say like, "Can you just is anybody around that can just come along and give us like a lead tomorrow for the show?" Or like, yeah. You know, why do you think we just, that yeah. relationship's so rare? Really, I don't know. The more people there are, the better. Yeah. People, I don't know. Yeah. It's like the other day, these two guys came down. They cooked us like. A, in Manchester, yeah. Manchester, these two twin brothers, they cooked us a big curry and brought him down to the gig. It was really lovely. Wow. Quite, quite, no, touch, I don't, quite touching. Yeah. yeah. I found they cooked it like at home. And I think it's like, weird that know, people wouldn't uh, utilise that kind of shit. Yeah, it's nice. It seems. Yeah, definitely. Well, a week or so before Christmas, you released. I want to say your most ambitious track to date. Obviously, Wet Hot Beef was pretty massive. But I Am Joseph Stalin is. Pretty like <laughs> yeah. out there, yeah. yeah. Why did you decide to write a song from his perspective as a partner to a song from the perspective oh. of Marky e. Smith? Well, well there, there's 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 definitely certain similar yeah certain similarities between the two of them. A willingness to, to purge, <laughs> maybe an over willingness to purge. <laughs> you know, there was actually I read an, uh, an interview of, like months after that, and it was Marky e. Smith in the Guardian of the Independent saying. Joseph Stalin had, had the right idea. I know, I'm just fucking, that's great, man. You know, it's out there somewhere. But I, I think also the reason we wrote that song about Stalin is because we had the, mu the music. <coughs> that ridiculous kind of I had this like Gregorian. Where they salute the military going past yeah. the hand and that kind of voice. <laughs> Do you um, expect that will be something more prominent on your next album? I, no, I don't. I'm not sure. Not necessarily on the next album because that retains kind of a similar sound to the last one. Although it's kind of it, it moves <coughs> from the extremes. There's more. There's heavier stuff. And there's kind of mellow stuff as well. But after we've done that, I think we want to pursue kind of doing a kind of more synth kind of bass record. Wait, have you got most of the album put together then? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's not finished, but it's nearly finished. And it should be out in September. Fantastic. Finally, one of the um, big stories that's come out in relation to that is that you're using John Lennon's old equipment to record uh, some of your new stuff. Yeah. Uh, could you elaborate on how that happened? Well, we're just friends with Sean Lennon, so we just did his studio. Some of his stuff. It's his dad's. Sorry, some of the stuff is his dad's stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for speaking yeah, to us. Right.